Welcome to week seven of SWCPL's summer reading program. This is the group of preschool, toddlers, and kindergarten. Today's story is going to be The Perfect Seat by Min Lei and Gus Gordon. Now, I don't know about you, but when I'm settling in to do some reading, I like to find the nice the nicest, comfiest spot I can find to sit and read. You know, maybe there's some nice sunlight coming in through the window. Maybe if it's kind of cold, I have a nice blanket, nice cushiony seat. So that's what this story is all about. When I hear the perfect seat, it reminds me of a folk tale or an old story, like a fairy tale, that I've heard before. Have you ever heard of Goldilocks and the Three Bears? Yeah, so in that story, Goldilocks finds herself in the three bears' house, and she is looking for the porridge and the seat and the bed that is just right. It's not too hot, not too cold, not too hard, not too soft. And that's kind of how I feel when I'm looking for a good place to sit. So we're going to read The Perfect Seat. Look, when we open it up, we've got a map of the city that they're in. Maybe those are all the places they're going to have to look to find the perfect seat. Can you read to me? Of course. But first, we have to find the perfect seat. And so we begin. Uh, too big. Too small. Ooh, too old. Look, it's got cobwebs on it. Too new. That one's in a store window. I think it's maybe an expensive seat. Too rough. Too slippery. I don't think riding a bike and reading would work very well, do you? And I don't think I could read a book while I'm going down a slide either. Especially not a water slide. That would be awful. The book would get drenched and it'd be all broken and soppy. Should the perfect seat make you this dizzy? I don't think so. Oh, too thin. Too wide. They'd really have to yell to hear the story, wouldn't they? Too tall. Too short. They couldn't even fit there. Too funky. That's not really a chair, is it? That's a sculpture. Too fancy. What about here? Do you think it would be nice to sit on the bridge and listen to the water flowing, the birds chirping? Uh-oh, he fell off. Are you okay down there? Oh, I give up. Found it! Oh, sitting under a tree, that's a great place to read. Perfect. So sometimes maybe when your parents are reading to you, it's nice to sit in their lap, right? And you can kind of cuddle up together and you can see the book and you can hear them really nicely. So I think maybe anywhere where you're with someone would be a perfect seat, right? All right, so I hope you enjoyed the perfect seat. And hopefully you found a perfect place to sit to watch this video. So stay tuned for this week's craft. You are going to get to make your very own instrument. It's going to be super cool. And we would love to see how they turn out. This week we will be making jar lid banjos. And what you're going to need in your kit that you find when you pick it up at the library, you'll find a lid. There's different size lids and whatever lid you get in your kit, you can use any size you want. There'll be two popsicle sticks and you'll have three rubber bands just like this. And now we'll get started. The first thing you're gonna to, want to do is take your lid and stick it up in the air and start putting your rubber bands on it just like this for the guitar strings. Just like that. Yeah. And 
Those are your guitar strings. Now the next thing you're gonna to wanna to do for your Jarwood guitar is take your two popsicle sticks and you're going to wanna to take them and take heavy duct tape or scotch tape or packing tape or whatever kind of tape you have at home and you're gonna to wanna to tape your two popsicle sticks together at the top. Just like that. Now you're going to turn your lid over and you're going to tape it onto the back with another piece of heavy tape. You can lay this down to make this easier. And when you're taping it, you're going to want to also when you tape the strings down too. Okay. And there you have it. Now you can decorate your banjo um, stick with different kinds of duct tape. You can take um, markers, you can take crayons, whatever you would like. And we're going to take and wrap it around just like that. And then you can take a second piece and mark it and leave a little gap and do it like that. Now, you're going to want to take a Sharpie or sequins and glue, depending on what you have at home, and you're going to want to put four dots on the end of your handle, and these will be your tuner spots. And there you go. There is your Jarlid Banjo. Thank you.